Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, friends of the art of Japanese prints. Well, let me introduce myself. My name is Dieter Manshura. I am the owner and manager of the Artelino Company. And we offer Japanese prints in weekly online auctions. And we also produce videos. Videos, of course, focused on Japanese prints, always about Japanese prints. Well, the subject of today's video is aiming more at beginners. Therefore, it's titled Japanese prints for beginners, Yakusha-e. Yakusha-e is one of these special terms that you find in all collector fields. And it comes from the Japanese language, of course. It's a little bit like a, a wall for, for beginners, but don't be afraid. There's not much behind it. When you want to know something about Japanese prints, the Ottolino website, it's not just an auction site. It also has a lot of contents and among others, it has an encyclopedia. So let's go there and check. I already prepared it for you. Okay, let's go there. And there you see meaning of Yakusha E. Yakusha hyphen E. You can also find it as Yakusha Ga. Let's start with the end. E or ga. E is the Japanese word for image for a picture and ga is precisely the same. And what is yakusha? Yakusha is an actor. So yakusha e is an image, uh, a print image of a Jap Japanese actor, especially a kabuki actor. In order to understand yakusha e, we have to take a look at the Japanese Kabuki theater. Kabuki is the traditional form of the Japanese theater, which is centuries old and which exists still until our days. And it flourished especially during the 18th and the 19th century. You must imagine um, Edo, the old name for Tokyo, what is today uh, the capital uh, of Japan, and used to be the, the capital uh, during the Edo period, the Edo period from roughly 1600 until 1868. That was a, a huge metropolis with roughly one million inhabitants, densely populated. And um, well, this one million populations, um, they lived in peace and quite a few of these people, um, they had a certain wealth. And among this population in Edo, an entertainment industry in developed itself. And the Kabuki theater was one part um, of this entertainment um, industry. Other parts were, of course, women, brothels, tea houses. Well, who were the customers for the Kabuki theater? Um, but first I want to mention the samurai. The samurai were warriors, but there was a period of peace, they had nothing to do. According to historians, they estimate that six to eight percent of the Japanese population were samurai. And samurai, you couldn't become a samurai like you could become, uh, let's say, a carpenter. Yeah? Um, you were a samurai by birth. It was hereditary. And well, these guys had nothing to do. They were paid in rice by a kind of rice taxations for the common people, for the farmers. And there were many samurai and, and other attendants of these daimyo. Daimyo were the local dukes. And they had to maintain a residence, a permanent residence in Edo. That was the law by the ruling shogunate. Um, that was a tricky system to keep the daimyo under control, who uh, until 1600 had fought until each other for a hundred years, huge civil wars. Yeah? In order to prevent that, they were forced to have this steady residence. It was a kind of a hostage system. Yeah, this had to be a huge residence with many attendants and, and, and samurai and members of the family. Yeah, 
Uh, and this was expensive like this, the Daimler were kept down, yeah? But these people had nothing to do. So they were looking for entertainment. And the other guys who had nothing, you know, no, they had a lot to do, but they had a lot of money. These were the merchants. You must imagine the Edo system, that was a four-class system, a very rigid system. You couldn't change the class in, to which you were born. And the funny thing is, the merchants, they were the lowest class. But over the decades, they became the richest people. So they were a low-ranking class with a lot of money, and they couldn't really show their wealth so openly. When they built luxurious homes, um, that could trigger the anger of the ruling shogunate. And there were even cases when they demolished their houses for um, too much luxury. So what could they do with their luxury? Only spend it, and they spend it into the entertainment industry. Uh, brothels, women, tea houses, and kabuki theaters, of course. Well, this huge entertainment industry in Edo and also in some other larger cities of Japan, that was the main market for another industry. Um, let me call it the printmaking industry. The technique for making books and single images, prints like these that we collect today, in old Japan until the middle of the 19th century, was exclusively the old Japanese technique of woodblock printmaking. Well, how does it work? Yeah, in order to print something, a wooden block was carved, and for each color, a separate block had to be carved. Completely different what the Europeans did with steel plates and, and all that stuff. One of the highest development, uh, developments of printmaking in, in the world. And they achieved an incredible skill over many decades and uh, over several centuries. And important to know, today yeah, we regard this as high art. During the time when they were produced, it was not regarded as high art. It was regarded as a commercial business, nothing else. Yeah, um, See it as a kind of a printmaking studio. Um, we call them today printmaking school, schools. The best known is the Utagawa school. Um, not founded, but um, the guy who made it famous was Toyokuni Utagawa the first. And again, they, these were print shops that the main commissions they got were for actor portraits, also portraits of courtesans uh, from the brothels for Yoshiwara, for instance, the um, brothel quarter for, for Edo, or for theater um, performances. New performances were announced with such um, prints. And prints like these, you can compare them uh, to today's posters for celebrities, yeah? And these prints and books, they were sold at special shops or at the box offices of kabuki theaters. And before a new performance came out at these kabuki theaters, there were also vendors who went from house to house and, and sold uh, these prints that we call today Yakushae. A curiosity, by the way, uh, sometimes collectors can find the same design, but with different actor names. How come? You must imagine new performance. The main actor becomes sick, he had to be replaced. It was too late to um, produce, to create um, new woodblock prints. Though they took old designs, just replaced the name. This was it. Well, now let me introduce a few of these artists, the main artists, yeah, who produced Yakusha E. Let's first take a look at the Edo period, the classical period of Japanese prints. Um, the Edo period ended in 1868, and I want to mention um, three names. First of all, Sharako, second, 
Kunisada, Kunisada Utagawa, and third, um, a school called Osaka School, uh, which was completely uh, specialized in, uh, in, in Kabuki prints, in Yakusha E, and there is one artist named Hirosada Utagawa. But one by one, um, first uh, a look at Sharaku. Sharaku Toshusai, we do not know when he was born, we do not know when he died, and he's one of the greatest mysteries of art history. We know nothing about him. This guy produced roughly 160 uh, kabuki, mainly actor uh, prints, within just two years. So active 1794 until 1795. And they were produced in a very specific way. You see, this is rather unusual. It's nearly like a, a kind of a caricature, yeah? And in today's market, uh, these originals, they are so extremely rare. Basically, you can see them only at museums. And whenever such an original comes into the market, it may fetch prices at Christie's or Sotheby's of something like half uh, a million. But it hardly ever happens. And all prints, practically all prints, that you see on the internet, uh, on web shops, galleries, they are reproductions today by Shah Raku. Well, the next artist, Kunisada Utagawa, let's take a few of his images. Well, there you see um, typical Kunisada prints from Kabuki uh, performances, Kabuki Ekatas. Kunisada was one of the commercially most successful um, ukiyo-e artist. Ukiyo-e basically the same as Japanese prints. And it's estimated that he produced 20,000 to 30,000 different designs uh, during his lifetime. His lifetime, uh, let me see, 1786 until 1865. Of course, he did not produce these himself. Huh? Um, he had a lot of apprentices and students um, and guys who worked for him. Um, he just supervised it every now and then. He did something uh, himself. He was the head of the Utagawa school. Uh, first he, was a he began as a student under Toyokuni and well after um, some fights with another guy he could finally he became the head of the Utagawa school. As I said before this was a commercial business yeah that was a a huge enterprise, yeah? This was not a, a, an art studio, yeah? And Kunisada, during his time, he was considered the greatest and the best artist for Japanese prints. Today we see things a little bit different, and when you start collecting ukiyo-e, um, what, what you will see as originals most often are prints by Kunisada Utagawa. Let's take a look at the Osaka School. Well, the Osaka School, like the name says, um, was in Osaka, the second largest um, city of Japan at that time, as far as I know. And they nearly exclusively worked for the Kabuki uh, market. And they made a lot of these bust portraits. Um, the most important artist of the Osaka School was Hirosada Utagawa. Well, next a look at the Meiji period. The Meiji period began um, after 1868. And, well, the artist I mentioned, Konichiga, Konichiga Toyohara, he is also named the last ukiyo-e master. Um, he worked completely in this old traditional style of making ukiyo-e and uh, he was a fan of the kabuki theater. He was a lot behind the stage, uh, in front of the stage, made sketches and at home, well then he uh, completed designs 
for many, many uh, Yakushae, Kabuki um, performance and Kabuki actor prints like um, this one. Let's take a, a look at the 20th century. The tradition of Japanese printmaking um, has continued until our days and for the 20th century, the first half of the 20th century, there is a, an important art movement. It's called Shinhanga. It was a kind of um, revitalization of the old art of Ukiyo-e. It was quite successful, but was mainly um, an export business. The Japanese people were no longer interested in their own um, art, or commercial art at that time, and Shinhanga lifted it from commercial art to real art, sold the stuff expensive and exported it mainly, mainly to the US but also Europe. And this is a, a major collector uh, field today. And Yakusha E, actor portraits, also became a part of this Shinhanga uh, art movement. And there are two names I want to mention. One is Natori Shunsen and the other Masa, Masa Mitsu Ota. Let's take a look at a few of these prints by Natori Shunsen. You see um, actor portraits, yeah, typical kabuki actor, but uh, looks a little bit different from the prints of Konisada or, or Konishika. Well, um, in the second half of the 20th century, there's one outstanding artist. So Ruya Koke, and I want to mention him. He uh, continued the art of Yakushae and he made some kind of modern Sharako prints, something that reminds uh, of this, this Sharako guy. Let's take a look at that. A little bit caricature like, yeah. Look look at this. Quite quite strange. Tsuruya Koke had a tough life at the beginning. Um, nobody wanted his prints. Well then, the, he met the director of the Kabuki Sa, the old traditional Kabuki theater in Tokyo, and he proposed him, hey, let's try to sell your prints at the box office, and it worked. And Tsuruya Koke, born 1945, became quite successful. Um, Collectors like him, his prints are not quite cheap, and he works exclusively in the old woodblock printmaking technique. And um, his edition size is maybe of 100, and he's active until our days. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, I am afraid that was again a long, long video. Thanks for your patience and thanks for watching. And I want to finish with a Japanese proverb. It goes like, only lawyers and painters can turn white to black. And I want to add, only Japanese printmakers can create such wonderful prints in multicolor technique. This is the end. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and take care of yourself.